uh, all to play for, sir. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? So I'm delighted to be joined by Rich from the Lord Strangers uh, Swindon podcast today. And we're going to talk about two very, very interesting young men that are in part of the Aston Villa Academy, but have been sent out on loan to Swindon over the course of the 2021-2022 season. And these are two people that I think Aston Villa fans are really going to want to hear your opinion on, Rich. But firstly, thank you and welcome to the podcast. And, and how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. And thank you for having me on. It's 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 great to talk about two very exciting players. Yeah, absolutely. And spoiler alert, those two players, which are never mentioned in the in the intro and the preamble, are Ken Kessler Hayden and Louis Barry. And obviously two players that I think that Aston Villa fans will really want to see make the jump into the senior squad. Maybe not this year, but definitely over the next 18 months. Um, uh, because they are players that are, are very highly thought of, even within England setups, England under twenties, England under nineteens, and obviously Louis Barry's backstory is a is a film in itself, coming from West Bromwich to Barcelona, back to his boyhood team in Aston Villa, and uh, now getting a taste of of senior football um, with Swindon with Swindon Town. So um, yeah, I suppose uh, of the two, I I think it's probably best to start with because the two of them were like ships in the night when they passed through your club. And it was really interesting because um, they both had different fortunes, I think, in their first loan. Because both of them were on loan, um, loan, uh, you know, at, throughout the course of this season. Obviously, Louis Barry didn't have the best of loans at Ipswich. And then his fortunes turned around and he came to Swindon. And we'll talk about him in a moment. But let's start with Kane Kester Hayden because he started the year with Swindon Town. And um, I, I'm going to be really honest. I'm going to be really honest. When, when we heard that when... You know, the news broke that Ken Kester Hayden went to Swindon. Um, I think people were a bit bemused because they thought that he might be kept on to play as that second fiddle right back to Matty Cash because we left ourselves with no, with no full back cover. And uh, boy, are we delighted that he did go on loan to Swindon because he, he, he seemed to tear up trees uh, with Swindon when he was there. He did very well. And I think on our side of things, because of the youth cup exploits and, you know, the bits and pieces that you you know about upcoming Premier League mm. players, we were quite surprised that we got Kane Kester Hayden too. It was quite a coup, really, and you always expect these sort of elite level youth players, especially that are picking up silverware in such a big, vast sort of youth network, will go to a League One club minimum. Um, and he proved that later in the season that he was perfectly capable in the high end of League One too. So we were just as surprised as you guys were. That, that we'd got him. I imagine that was down to contacts or the way we play, a bit of both maybe. But it, it was it was pretty it was pretty exciting. And his debut at Swindon was one of his best games actually. It was kind of bookended by his two best performances. So his debut against Gunthorpe and his final game mm -hmm. against Man City were actually his two best performances. But he had a very, very solid time at Swindon. When you see all those Aston Villa social media accounts, fan accounts, you kind of think that you, you kind of think to yourself, "What have we got here? Have we got the next Jack Grealish?" This, the, the the hype around Kane Kessler Hayden was absolutely insane. He was a very very useful and very capable player. May not have hit the heights that we were hoping for, but he did against Man City, which is why we lost him. So so it was yeah. um, it was a great shame, but great great player. It, and it's interesting that you mentioned that because at the start of the preamble, just in case anybody is it get, gets confused, I was speaking about the Liverpool FA Cup game for Aston Villa last season. And obviously he played against Liverpool, played a really, really great game, really good game for, for Villa that day in a team that was just, all it was was like um, an under-16 team that day. You know, obviously we, di we didn't have a, a, an awful lot of players. And uh, then he goes out against Man City in the in, in the cup almost twelve months later and puts in one of his best performances as well. So that was really that was a really interesting piece that you mentioned there because um, I think a lot of people think that that you know that his his level of play can can get can get better commensurate with the with the uh, the league he's playing in or the competition he's playing against as well. Um, you mentioned an interesting piece there. You said, "Have we got the next Jack Grealish?" And I know that a lot of people within the club. 
maybe don't know where this guy's going to fit in as he, as he goes up through the senior ranks because obviously he's playing in the full back position at the moment. Did he play more maybe on the wing for you guys or was he pushed further further upfield for Swindon? I would say he was he was right wing back and he was much more exciting going forward. I mean, exciting is the wrong word because it's very hard to be an exciting right back defensively, isn't it? You just do your job largely. But um, he was much more impressive going forward than he was defending. And that's not to say he was particularly bad at defending. He may be a little bit out of position from time to time. But when it's one of the big regrets with the ships in the night thing, because him and, if him and Barry were in the same Swindon team, we would have had great fun in that second half of the season. But I, I saw him more attack-minded than anything. But he did a very good job defensively against Man City, which again is why Gerard sat up on his sofa and um, decided to call him back. And it, it's interesting because another piece that you mentioned uh, mentioned a moment ago was that you know Aston Villa have sent players on loan to Swindon, and you don't know whether it's because of the way you play or whether there's connections and things there. And we do have quite a there, there's been a kind of a a change and even mid-season when 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 Stephen Gerrard came in there was a tweak in what our loan strategy was and uh, essentially it is essentially what you said there it's that the likes of Milan Yednak who is uh, our who was our loans manager I can't even remember if he still is at the moment he wanted to implement the case whereby the players would go out and they would play in exciting teams they would play in teams that would utilize them to their best talents as opposed to going playing and then maybe having to learn a whole new system so it was setting them up for the best for 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 the best and and for them to succeed and so they come back into the Aston Villa setup and um have heightened those talents as well and I think specifically somebody must have um must be doing something right down in Swindon to say that Louis Barry and Ken Kester Hayden went there because both of them excelled there and yeah. considering but when when you look at you know you mentioned there that the Ken Kester Hayden went on and he did go on to to MK Dons uh, after the after the, the, the Christmas break or within the Christmas within the summer the January transfer window but um, I think that was more so a kind of a tweak where Gerard wanted to get most if not all of our loan players back I think the only loan player that didn't come back was Finn Azaz at, at Newport, Newport County yeah. but Good the thing. majority of the guys had come back and had um, had Gerard had, had a look around at them and then maybe sent them out on loan again afterwards so yeah um, the, the the feeling was the sound bites that we were getting from the club was like he's back and we don't anticipate him to be back so I think they they knew the writing was on the wall in that yeah. front Yedinak must have had some sort of working relationship with Swindon's former manager, Ben Garner. I say former manager, he hasn't left yet, but we largely expect him to resign in the next few days. We said that a week ago, but it's all gone a bit quiet. And also our director of football, Ben Chorley, has left. So it, there's a whole, whole lot of stuff in the moment. But I imagine he had an actual relationship with Garner, who used to be a youth coach at Crystal Palace, um, might have been one of the main reasons why we probably got Lou, Louis Barry in as a look we're going to bring him back but this guy's had a bad time in league one so we'll give you louis barry and and you know mm. sorry about the kester caden thing <laughs> kester Hayden but, thing. I, th I think the uh, for me i think the current the the connection there as well i think it was probably twofold obviously uh swindon were playing some nice football but i think the the connection was west brom connection if i'm not mistaken was ben garner with west brom for quite a he while was a little bit was, as well he, yeah he was the head coach there assistant head coach or something head coach. and um we've got uh, pretty much our academy we just robbed we just it's like as if we just flew a helicopter over west brom one <laughs> night pulled up their academy and dropped it in the middle of b6 in birmingham and we just completely pilfered everything they had going right for them there one night, uh, over the space of a summer so i think that's probably where the connections came from um, in that instance, that Ben Garner could call on, you know, the past, co a past uh, t not teammates, but coaching mates that he would have had from West Brom, get the inside track and maybe say, listen, we're going to play, you know the style we play, you know the style I want to play, let's try and implement it with these guys down here and, and, and give us some of your best. So um, nice to have those contacts. And as I say, oh, why is Ben Garner, why, why do they think, why do you think he's going to re resign? Is it that he's going to take another job? Or Yeah, th this will probably date your, uh, your episode quite quickly, but <laughs> Um, ben Garner about six days ago, what day are we on? A week ago, it was it was leaked via London media that yeah. Charlton Athletic Charlton, had agreed yeah. terms with him. And then nothing has happened since. And we don't really know what's going on. The clubs have been quiet. Charlton have said that the process is still ongoing. They've not mentioned Garner at all. Swindon have obviously, for various reasons, had to keep tight-lipped over it. So 
we're kind of assuming that's done now and with every day that passes it's just a little bit harder for for the fans to sort of be like does this guy want to be here because you've kind of jumped at the first opportunity which is not a crime at all um he had he, he arrived with with question marks over his ability as a senior football manager and he mm. did very well last season and now a team the size of Charlton Athletic comes in for you you're going to take it so it's one of those things but we're still waiting for the uh the confirmation yeah and it's uh, I suppose it's interesting because there's another serendipitous piece with Aston Villa as well because Michael Beale who looks like he's going to take over once again yeah, I'm dating yeah. my podcast now looks like he's <laughs> going to take over a QPR probably today we're recording this and 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 Wednesday the first of June but um, looks like he's going to take over QPR. He was heavily in the running for Charlton for the Charlton job as well. Um, at one stage, so it looks like uh, League One Championship teams are, are looking to sign coaches more so than big names now, and maybe try and build from build from there. So, um, so it is it is an interesting one. Um, the ownership. I'm going to go slightly off topic here because um, I can't remember if he's still in. Did he or has he sold the club yet? But is Lee Power? Is it Lee Power that it is? Um. Um, still in charge uh, of the club there and and does he have an influence on running it the, re- the only reason i ask is because he's involved in irish football as well and, uh, mm. but i have the opportunity to mention him yes yeah 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 mm-hmm. yeah so i will say luckily lee power has now left the club <laughs> but the war i don't think is over between current owners and him but i think that will just rage on for as long mm-hmm. as everybody gets what they think they need re- financially so our current owner is a former associate of lee power there was a big fallout it's a long long story it went through the courts it was a very stressful summer last year ultimately the current owner clem Mulfooney, uh he wrestled control through the courts um and um when he came in we've had eight players and we had to build with about three or four weeks yeah. before the season started so it was a very very stressful time for those in the know and and fans wondering what the hell was happening and whether we would have a 2021-22 season, which is why um, we we had such a great time last year because everything, all the rhetoric to start with was just stay in the Football League. And then we ended up in the playoffs and fell at the semi-finals. So, um, yeah, Lee Power's gone, not forgotten. And we await some news at some point that, that, that rambles on in the background. But in football terms, he's out of the club he's gone. now. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure whether there was kind of a, a co-ownership, kind of a shadow no. ownership, or there was a all... ownership at the moment. I, I knew that last summer was quite tum- tumultuous, but uh, I wasn't quite sure whether it was... Pretty you know, much over, yeah. everyone in the, the higher levels of Swindon are former associates of Lee Power, which is something to keep your eye on, really. Um, but they are they are all, you know, our owner and our vice chairman are all people that have once worked alongside and now fallen out with Lee Power. So it's 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 a quite the do it's quite the family separation but it, it's it's working at the moment okay okay well hopefully long may continue and long mm. and hopefully it kind of uh, it just fiddles out through the courts and not on the playing field or in the boardrooms of, of swindon town but we haven't even spoken about louis barry yet and as i say my my um punch on for seeing things shiny and remembering things about clubs gotten away there and sidetracked us a small bit but massive 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 high high expectations of louis barry around aston villa Obviously, that goal against Liverpool in the FA Cup, kind of maybe, you know, it 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 was something that nobody expected. We went, we we got that he got that goal, and then everybody went, yeah, this guy's going to be the new Mike Lone. Um, but he's gone. He went to Ipswich Town at the start of the season, which I thought was going to be a great loan move for him. Once again, going back to Irish football again, Paul Cook was the manager of Ipswich Town, um, and uh, Paul Cook tore it up here in Ireland, and and is a good manager, but. It seemed that Louis Barry was signed, and then there was like fifteen other people signed on top of him, and he just got lost in the wash. With regards to with regards to what happened at Ipswich, and didn't really play that much at all. Had a couple of fleeting uh, appearances off the bench and so on, and then he went to Swindon, and all hell broke loose, and he mm-hmm. started to become a very very uh, able contributor at Swindon Town. So talk me through what uh, what your feelings on Louis Barry are. Yeah, I think I don't think it would be unfair on Swindon to say that. It was never Louis Barry's goal to end up in League Two, but I think it was a very good move by Villa mm. to give him a morale boosting sort of spell at a League Two club that will play him week in, week out. He started on the bench, but once he got to full fitness, he he was always in the lineup. 
and he was a genuinely exciting player. I mean, I've got to say this because I was his shirt sponsor, so he needs to kick oh, on. Excellent. He needs to kick on and play for England or the Republic of Ireland because uh, <laughs> because I've got a signed shirt up there which I'll never fit in. So I'll, I'll make some money on that in about ten years' time, hopefully. But, well, I can <laughs> I can guarantee you, Muggins here if he plays, <laughs> I'll be the first bidder. Guarantee. Get in touch. Get in touch. No, um, so um, I've got Louis Barry is an interesting figure because. Some of the stuff I saw Louis Barry do this year was far beyond, you know, the abilities of mostly to footballer. But like many footballers, they, they he blow he blow hot blew hot and cold quite a bit, but not in a necessarily a bad way. He, he, because we were playing well, you don't really notice, you know, those, those yeah. sort of flaws. Um, and what him and Kane Kessler Hayden have in common, like with Man City. Kane Kessler Hayden put in a performance that didn't look like a League Two player just trying so hard against Man City. It was a very natural performance. He 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 looked like he belonged in that game against one of the best teams in England. And Louis Barry had that. When some of his sort of when some of his skills where he passed people was just it was too good. But when he wasn't in the game, he was nowhere to be seen unfortunately and and near especially in the the last playoff game where you need that that bit of razzmatazz and that that excitement and flair it wasn't there and we just kind of burnt out and it was a shame but he's going to be a hell of a player if they look after him in the next low move which hopefully will be lower end championship upper end league one for him if he plays 46 games in that then I think he'll be a Villa first teamer but he he still needs a little bit of time i think um out on loan he's very very young i i think that's fair to say i think and uh you know he's i think he's pedigree from where he's always played ages above himself um and that's all well and good when you're 14 playing against 16 that's fine you can get away with trickery and not everybody is, is as brutish when you're 15 playing 17 when you're 16 playing 18 all that kind of stuff and then when you kind of get to 18 and you're playing against guys who are 28 you know the the golf come becomes the golf and just cuteness and uh and, and experience becomes becomes quite big and and as you say there are guys that won't have an uh, an ounce of his talent that he may play against in his career but they will know how to shackle him oh my goodness yeah i mean his talent it's a bit of a cliche especially in english football isn't it when 18 year olds with villa and barcelona in their in their history the 34 year old who never went above yeah. 18th place in League One, we'll say, well, we'll we'll put him in his place, and and I don't really, and that might have happened occasionally, but he he it didn't really, he wasn't kicked about like Johnny Williams might have been kicked about um as much, but he just played with so much enthusiasm and like he was enjoying it, and he really got involved with the Swindon thing. If you see see the goals, he goes in with the crowd. He mm. he really sort of took the time to really get involved and he, he looked grateful he genuinely after what happened with him at Ipswich which would be a body blow to both his ego and his career yes. because he would have gone there with you know the shiny ear piercing and gone where do you want me and then it didn't work out so that would have been <laughs> that would have been a blow to him probably great for his long-term future but he came to Swindon he probably realized that you know this can't go wrong and he got fully involved in it. And the games where he disappeared, it wasn't necessarily his fault. These things happen. He's a young footballer learning his mm. way. But when he was on the ball, my goodness, some of, he humiliated some players um, down on the touchline. It was it was brilliant to see. And I hope he, he takes that on. I'd love to see him at Swindon, but that's absolutely not going to happen. And hopefully a progressive team that likes to play the ball and attack will take him on next year and it will, it's in the best interests of England really that that they whoever takes him on next looks after him or indeed Villa look after him because he could be a really exciting future prospect internationally but not quite there yet but I can see why all these clubs have you know clamoured for him since he was at West Brom. Mm. I still have fingers crossed he's going to do the reverse ferret and come back and play for a Republic of Ireland and um, so he did play under un, uh, underage for for a Republic yeah, of Ireland yeah. but Fingers crossed. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't want him to mature at least 26 from an international point of view, but I want him to mature yesterday from an Aston Villa point of view. That's how, that's how I think of it. But it was interesting you mentioned there. I had a little chuckle when you mentioned about the shiny ear piercing. All I could think of was Jamie Tart from Ted Lasso. 
uh, that <laughs> the guy who's coming in to, coming in on loan from the big team. And also, when you mentioned about the 34-year-old guy who's got to kick people up in the air, I don't know why, but my mind always goes, and, and you might remember him, he's an, old, he's an older player. I was really young when, I, when, when he played, and he never played in the Premier League, I don't think. But Andy ha- was it Hessenthaler? And he has yeah, the, oh, I, Andy I don't know why I re- yeah. I think yeah, Gillingham. I've no idea yeah. why he always brings to mind this the guy that will marshal yeah. you outside and basically if you come anywhere near him, he's gonna kick you seven foot into the sky. Yeah, I guy don't know why. Like guy looked like an ogre. He looked <laughs> petrifying. And, you know, I, if I if I bumped yeah. into him in a pub, I'd be scared to death of spilling his drink. You know, he, he, he definitely had that look of a uh, of someone you didn't want to mess with, and he was a bit of a uh, an old school captain yeah. leader, wasn't he? Exactly, an enforcer, an enforcer. But um, so, look, I think it's fair to say that um, you know that the that it was a great breeding ground, a great a great learning ground for Ken Kessler Hayden and for for Louis Barry um over the course of last season. Um, anything I suppose further to say on the two guys? Is there anything that uh, I suppose that that kind of stood out for you in comparison to I suppose maybe other loan signings that you might have brought in over the course of the last year or two? No, not I mean not not really. I mean they were standouts in the in the grand scheme of the loan. I mean for those who don't know, and I appreciate Aston Villa fans don't necessarily all look down at League One, League Two, but the five loans that we're allocated to play on a match day, they're they're crucial. You know, some yeah. some fans think that they're too many, um, but because of the way football is financially, those loan moves pretty much keep us going. And you get a lot of players that are down there and they're you get this feeling of, you know, I'm going to be back at big club next summer and I'm going to kick on from there. And almost nine times out of 10, they end up joining League Two teams permanently at some point. But Kane Kessler Hayden and Louis Barry definitely had a little bit more um, in terms of their their ability. You know, players have fit into our system wonderfully well and done their jobs. But like I, like I said, with Kane Kessler Hayden, with Man City, he didn't look like a League Two player trying to play against Man City. He looked like a Premier League player. Um, fitting in very very well we didn't see Louis Barry play against better opposition so I can't make that sort of comparison but he's got it too and I would be really really interested to see what they do with him I, am, I expect that Lee, Kane Kester Hayden will be on the preseason tours say with Louis Barry so they can have a good look at them and if they have a good time they might stick around for the first league cup game and then go out on their loan at the end of August as is the custom um, but they're two very exciting I, I, I don't it's always hard because I've seen many, many Swindon loan players come in and you think, God, these players are going to be 250 games plus in the Premier League. And then they, they just end up championship no more. And it's 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 so it's hard. And this is all dictated by what happens now in their loan spells, you know, where they go next. They Louis Barry cannot afford another Ipswich Town, but Kane Kester yes. Hayden can afford a unsuccessful loan spell at Luton or something like that. So mm. it's, 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 it's football careers are so fragile and right now be excited, but manage it and make sure that they're going to the right place for the right reasons, because they could be very, very useful assets to Aston Villa in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Rich, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You know, that's that's been some really great information. And I hope it's really kind of given given some insightful uh, thought for for the listeners of this podcast. Uh, once again, Rich is from the Lord Strangers uh, Swindon podcast, and you never know. As you say, the 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 connection has been made there between the two clubs. Um, if Ben Garner doesn't end up moving on, the connection will be strengthened, and whoever comes in there hopefully will have the same connection with Aston Villa. Maybe we can, uh, we might be might be meeting here again in twelve months' time again to discuss maybe some more loan uh, prospects that come from the academy. Um, uh, and uh, except this time we'll be talking about Swindon's promotion, and uh, you'll probably still be celebrating. So, oh, uh, <laughs> <almost certainly. laughs> no, it might be. No, my pleasure, and I'll, I'll smile with, through gritted teeth when uh, Louis Barry signs for Charlton in the summer on loan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Indiana, but hopefully, things, but yeah, hopefully, whoever he signs on for signs for he kicks on, and that the the cost of that jersey or the the well the worth of that jersey goes up and up and up because uh, I want to retire. Kids gotta man. go to college. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna retire, man. I'm not working till whatever the retirement age in the UK is now, eighty five or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I need that Louis Barry uh, career to really kick on because I ain't fitting into that medium shirt humor, man. I tell you. 
it's yeah, a, you know. I, I can empathize with that for sure. I can empathize with that. Well, Rich, thank you so much. Again, Rich from the Lord Strangers Swindon podcast, thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciate it. To everybody who's watching, if you could please just click the click the thumbs up button on this. If you could subscribe to us on YouTube and to our audio podcast. And if you are into Swindon, into Swindon Town and maybe they're, they're your second team, please uh, consider subscribing to the Lord Strangers podcast as well. Um, that's going to do it for us today. Really, really hope that you have a fantastic uh, rest of your week. I know I'm saying this and I'm dating this podcast because it's not going to come out on the day that we're, we're, we're recording it. But have a fantastic time. Stay safe, stay healthy. And all that's left to say is up to Villa.